one really important figure in like nutritional science of the 19th century was um, uh, Justus von Liebig. Um, I mean, he died in the 1870s, but like he was, you know, like the first, I, th I think the first person to identify nitrogen as essential to plant life. He, um, yeah, I think there's a university named after him, um, Justus Liebig University in um, Gießen, Gießen, something like that. Anyway, and so he incorrectly said that um, like you could only build um, muscle using animal protein, um, which I think some people still believe. And so he had this idea of basically <laughs> taking like a cow and um, like <laughs> taking a cow and like they'd like pulp it using iron rollers and then uh, basically just like distilling cow essence into like an extract <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> and uh holy shit yeah so like oh that's great and it was like suit like his his plot or his idea like i don't know whatever calculations he did he's like okay we'll take it was like really expensive it'd be like 30 pounds like 30 34 pounds or let's say like a ratio of 30 to one into so like you'd have like 30 kilos of meat to produce like a kilogram of this like extract of stuff, right? So um, they'd pulp it, they'd remove the fat, they'd heat it, and it'd, it'd be kind of like these molasses, right? This like thick, salty molasses. And um, he, he's like, okay, like it would be super expensive, right? To, to um, use so much meat for so little uh, output, right? It would be like, a, like this totally unaffordable thing. And so he had this like... Um, guy in Argentina who weirdly said that like the people there who had cow ranches would just like skin the cows and let them rot. I don't know. It, it seems weird to me, but anyway, like he, he went into business with this guy. And so they would, they produce a lot of this stuff. And anyway, uh, this is relevant to Nietzsche. I'll, I'll bring it up in a second. So um, he marketed this stuff as um, an extremely important an extremely important like health product right like if if you eat this stuff like logically right like if there's so much life-giving or like there's so many nutritious components to to meat like he believed then like distilling that essence into this extract would logically be like super duper healthy right and um nietzsche himself said that uh, like when he started taking like two two teaspoons of this stuff, this um, Liebig's uh, uh, what is it called, um, Fleisch extract, right? So like meat extract or whatever. Um, he, or at least like according to uh, Leslie Chamberlain, um, that he his greatest periods of um, activity and creativity were linked oh, to wow. uh, you know consuming this stuff, and he would take like a lot. Like he would take. Um, I think two teaspoons and I mean you would only need like let's say half a teaspoon to make stock for pasta or something like like it oh, must have wow. been really quite disgusting to eat um but anyway like it when this stuff first came out I think I don't know like 1840s or 50s but like it, it, it was really popular like hospitals were using it but then he started to get a lot of flack from scientists saying like, you know, I don't know what kind of assays they had back then. I mean, it was extremely primitive. Like they didn't even have vit like the concept of vitamins back then, but like um, people were suspicious of it. And um, uh, there's this guy, this German guy who like, he had, I think a very um, <laughs> simple scientific experiment to prove that this stuff was bunk. Like he, he took a bunch of dogs and just fed them nothing but this meat extract and like they all died so oh no yeah and so um they like this company uh this like liebig company like they had to kind of rebrand and say like okay well it might not be you know some miracle thing but it'll help you with like your digestion and stuff so that was like the 1870s when nietzsche started to um incorporate it and so according to nietzsche like this was um, like extremely helpful for him. And, and frankly, I don't understand exactly why 
this wouldn't work. Like to me, it actually seems like a great idea because like, if you look up the, um, you know, the nutritional profile of like organ meats, right? Like brains and, and right. um, like hearts and livers, like they're extremely nutritious. So I, I don't know why this didn't fly. Like I'm guessing, you know, maybe like when they were skimming the fat, or or something like they they maybe they applied too much pressure and heat i haven't really dug into it too much but like like if you look at for example <clears throat> the the kind of food that nietzsche ate right like um for example um his like there's this one i don't know where they got it from but like like his time in silsmer yeah he would eat for example like two raw eggs um some bread rolls some tea steak and macaroni then um for dinner he'd have like like again raw eggs and some polenta and so like just out of curiosity like i popped that into um uh, the this website called chronometer which to me is like one of the marvels of modern science um, they use the um excuse me the nutrition coordinating center database from the university of minnesota which is like again the amount of work that went into that, like, I think Nietzsche would like have his mind blown. But anyway, um, <laughs> if you look into that, like his diet was like really bad. Like um, there's like no vitamin C, uh, very low vitamin K, like bad magnesium, bad potassium. And so, you know, like not to, I mean, this is super speculative, right? But it's like, you get migraines from low magnesium, you get weakness um, from low potassium, um, um, like low vitamin K makes you, um, um, you know, sometimes bleed. Well, if you have really low for a long time, you might like bleed from the stomach, you might vomit blood. Like um, it, it, it like hurts me to think how, <laughs> how much worse it was for him. Right. Because like, like, man, they didn't even have vitamins. Like he, they didn't even know what that stuff was. I mean, I'm sure they could guess that there was like some foods that were, um, more nutritious than others. But I remember reading somewhere that like um, one conception of nutrition in the 19th century was that like, there's like some like food thing in food and that like all food <laughs> has that. Oh, thing wow. in it, right. Um, I don't know if Nietzsche believed that, but I don't think he did, but yeah, like I, well, so the, the, what I would say about like Nietzsche's diet is a couple things. Well, as far as like, I think he did have some sort of underlying condition, right? but right. it wouldn't surprise me if he exacerbated it with his diet. For sure. Um, yeah. And maybe it was because of his beliefs on, you know, I have to be a predator and yeah, eat a beefsteak every day. Um, yeah. Or because he also writes in the gay science a lot, right? About how all of the mental problems that can be followed rice based culture <laughs> or what right, have you like right. there's multiple passages where he talks about how oh well only a culture that um ate rice and used opium would um you know be fall victim to buddhism or something you know things like that where <laughs> it, it seems like he thinks um he thinks that he nietzsche perhaps has like a more radical view of like what you eat matters mm -hmm. than maybe a lot of modern scientists would that it can maybe even affect your beliefs and like who you are as a person, which, although, I mean, does seem like kind of a view that you you've put forward that like physiologically these things, which I think is true, like can affect your mood. Um, I mean, when I, I remember when I was younger and I was struggling with a lot of anxiety and like one of the first things my doctor said was like, well, you need to like change your diet. Mm -hmm. And just that was a revelation for me in and of itself that my gut is controlling my mood, which means it's not my like rationally deliberating brain or like that. This isn't an issue of like willpower or whatever, that there are all these like factors that are like combining to make me <laughs> or the, me, the experience, the subjective experience that I'm having of being an individual in the world. And um, so I, I don't know, I would think Nietzsche was aware of it, but yeah, for whatever reason, I've wondered about that too, because I've read about his daily habits as well. And um, it doesn't seem healthy to me, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, he, he did go to some spa. Um, 
I forget where, but like there they ate like mostly just like meat and like a little bit, I think like fruit salad, which I mean, I have found that like, for example, tilapia is one of the only foods that like, like meats are, are one of the few things that like don't cause an allergic reaction. And um, about like anxiety and diet, like, or, or something similar to that, um, for a holiday dinner, um, my company like um, basically gave us like 30 bucks and said like, well, buy your own lunch because we can't meet because of COVID, right? And so I went and like bought lobster, which I, it's like, I mean, it, it's pretty unaffordable. Like um, a single tail is like 10 bucks. <clears throat> and so I'm like, okay, let me buy um, some lobster tails. And um, man, <laughs> like, I know this sounds so silly, but um, after eating this lobster, I felt like such a tremendous amount of like energy and like mental fortitude. Um, and I was thinking about, uh, and then like I started like uh, eating, just like forcing myself to eat more protein, even though it was like painful. And, um, and then like, I was looking back at like the past, uh, like the, the months preceding that. And I would have these nights where I would just feel like so lethargic and so um, like wary of the world and just like increasing protein intake, like went a long way in ameliorating that. And to me, like, that's such a scary thing because like, when, when I have thoughts, they don't, they don't come with a receipt or like they, they don't come with, um, um, like, like the traces the stamp of, of origin or ex yeah. exact stamp of origin. Exactly. Right. Like they just seem like this is what I'm thinking. These are my perceptions of the world. Right. And it's like, it's so scary to me that like, they're just these, um, like excrescence, like it's it's this byproduct of this like chugging, like meat thing in my brain in my skull, right? Like th this like um, like chemical and electrical soup being performed, right. and, um, and it's so like seductive, right? Like it, it's so hard to to find distance from them. I remember in. I think, I don't know if it was a biography or an autobiography, but there's like the, um, like Gandhi and his brother, like his brother was trying to convince Gandhi to eat meat because, you know, he, he's like, well, like, dude, like the British are totally crushing us. And, you know, they've got these big, um, these big appetites for meat, right? They're like hungry predators, like to, to, to become like them, we need to start eating like them. Right. Um, so I think it's, um, there's something almost intuitive about it, but you're totally right that, yeah, like Nietzsche is extremely sensitive to diet. Like I know he valorizes the, um, the diet in Piemonte in Italy, where like, like the signature dish there is like, um, I think, I think it's like olive oil mixed with garlic that they, um, I think garlic, maybe uh, uh, something, some, oh, uh, garlic and anchovies, right. Which they make it to a fondue and then they dip veggies in it um trying to oh, sounds interesting sounds kind of tasty but um he compares that to um these like huge german meals which like i don't know his descriptions actually sound like really nutritious but um i don't know um maybe they like overcook it or something there's there's also something about like, like you said you know everyone's physiology is slightly different you have to figure out your own i mean like nietzsche's philosophy if he is kind of like that, like the fact that Zarathustra is like encourages people to like repudiate him, right? To be like, no, like, don't take me seriously, like figure things out for yourself, then come back to me. Thank you for listening to that clip from the Nietzsche podcast. Please like and subscribe. If you like what you hear, it really helps the channel out. And I post full episodes from the podcast here, as well as a lot of other content. You can also check it out on Spotify and Anchor.